Welcome to the SMC Comedy Showcase. Woo! I'm Jordan Wold, and I'm going to be hosting. We've got so many local Boston comedians, and they're all so great. But I'm here, too, and I'm going to do some comedy before <laughs> I let these, these funny, freshly picked people come up here. I am a, uh, I'm an anxious person for a lot of reasons, but I think chief among them right now is the fact that we don't live in a shoe shines economy. And what I mean by that is I worked as a shoe shine for over a year, and I was recently laid off <laughs> from being a shoe shine. And I don't know if you've ever been laid off from your $11 an hour job as a shoe shine where you rely on tips to get lunch. But it's not a great feeling. It, it kind of feels like being laid off as a shoe shine is like being an Arthur Miller character from 60 years ago. But I've decided to bring my, bring my poor employment into 2018. So now I work at, I'm not gonna name it because I don't wanna get sued, but the Wax Museum in Boston. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's called Dreamland, <laughs> and it's not by Government Center. <laughs> it's not an amazing job because it is in a wax museum. <laughs> I don't want to go into too much details about what it's like because I really don't want to get fired. But I guess, to use an analogy, I would say working at the wax museum is almost like if you were hired to work at a wax museum. <laughs> it's about that level of great. <laughs> I, I saw the movie Gotti recently, starring John Travolta as Gotti. And at the beginning of the movie, John Travolta as Gotti looks directly into the camera and says, gangsters, they either end up behind bars or dead. I did both. Which, first, everyone ends up dead. John Gotti dies of cancer. <laughs> at, that's really not a gangster way to die. My father has cancer, and he's not a gangster, I don't think. None of us ever really knows uh, anyone in our lives. <laughs> Maybe he's a gangster. I don't know. I, um, I went to a bar recently with some friends, and a 75-year-old man named Paul confessed to several murders in front of myself and my friends. And he was an open book. He was telling us about everything in his life. And we were t asking him questions, getting to know him a little better. And at one point, he said... What's the crazy? We asked him, what's the craziest thing you've ever seen? And he said, well, I saw a woman streak once, which really isn't that crazy if you've murdered two people. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the craziest thing you've ever seen is the two people you killed in cold blood, Paul. <laughs> I think that is about what I'm going to do for you folks today. And now I'm going to bring up the comedians who were picked to be here, and they're going to do some wonderful wonderful comedy for you. First up today is the incredible Ashley Sang Stacken. Come on up here. Hello. Um, incredible isn't a usual adjective for me. I don't know how to make this mic stand go up higher, so I'm just going to hunch Notre Dame-like over it. Um, I am not pregnant, though my haircut would suggest otherwise. Um, <laughs> I think uh, this haircut, these long locks make me look very fertile, um, but not like a standard pregnant woman, like the kind of pregnant woman who, well, the kind of pregnant woman who says something like, I don't believe in Western med medicine, but like with a wink and a little like kick afterwards, you know, like fun and flirty, um, you know, like the kind of pregnant woman who would like list Whole Foods as their emergency contact. Um, <laughs> You know, like, ma'am, ma'am, we'll call your mother soon. Oh, no, doctor, just call Justine from the vitamin aisle. She knows my fave fish oil sups. Hashtag cleanse. And then she dies. Um, that's it, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I live here in Boston. I like Boston a lot. I think it's a great city. I am actually from a small town, though, back out west in California. Um... I like being from a small town, but it's kind of difficult because you can never escape your past. Um, every time I go out in public in my small town, I'm guaranteed to run into three people who have witnessed me going through puberty. Um, 
usually if I'm talking to one of those people, you know, like they'll be like, oh, what have you been up to? And I'll be like, oh, you know, living in Boston, you know, small talk. Um, I'll, I'll be like, yeah, living in Boston. But really inside my head, I'm doing like Jedi mind tricks, you know, being like Ashley's body odor has always been under control. I'm just trying to erase all memories of me smelling bad and talking about how Perks of Being a Wallflower was my favorite movie. I'm trying to delete that. Um, I was talking with a friend recently um, about how she should have known she was gay when she had a crush on Legolas instead of Aragorn in the Lord of the Rings movies. Um, I feel like I should have known I was kind of gay um, when I had a, a crush on Jesus. Um, you know, of Nazareth. Um, uh, I, you know, it was just one of those things when I was like, when I would sit in church when I was younger, you know, he has that really fun bisexual long bob. Um, he has the feminine hips. He's always sticking like this, like kind of fun flirty with his chest out. Um, I really think, you guys, I know this crowd is loving this joke. Um, I really think that um, actually Jesus was a lesbian. So hear me out. <laughs> he loved robes. He loved rice-based dishes. He loved throwing dinner parties for friends. And he could turn water into wine. Red wine, specifically. If you can turn water into wine, that's like the biggest lesbian superpower there is. <laughs> Um, I'll leave you with a, a story. Everything I'm about, about to say is true, and it's legal now, so I can talk about it. Marijuana, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, uh, uh, I was recently, I'm in college, so of course recently I was drunk at an Applebee's with my friends. Um, that's what happens when you're this age. Um, we were there, and we were, we were smoking outside, and uh, I think I dropped um, some, some of my pot outside. And so I went back inside the Applebee's, and I was sitting with my friends, didn't realize anything had happened. And then this girl with a name tag that says Faith, she works at the Applebee's, she comes up with a martini shaker on a platter like this. And she goes, did one of you guys drop your weed? And I was like, yes. And she takes the lid off the martini shaker to reveal my lost marijuana. It was so incredible. And so I was like, what is your name? And she was like, Faith. I was so excited to meet her. She was really such a winner. Um, and so my friends, we all, we collected money amongst us so we could give her a separate tip um, because we were so appreciative. And I go and I couldn't find her. I looked everywhere in the Applebee's and then I, I um, went to the back of the restaurant to go find another waitress and I went up to this waitress and I was like, hi, um, here's some money for Faith. She did us a really big favor. Could you give this to her? And she was like, I don't know anyone named Faith. <laughs> she was a ghost, guys. She was a ghost or like the patron saint of dramatic and re reveals and lost marijuana. Like she'll, next time she's going to be like, here is your long lost sister. And they'll be like, oh my God, I wondered where you were. And then she'll unzip it and it's just a giant bag of weed dressed up as a person. Um, I miss her. I love her so much. Faith, if you ever see this public access TV show, come find me. I will give you the $7 tip I collected. <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks. Uh, that's all I have for you guys. Yeah. Those of us who aren't holding microphones, let's give it up for Ashley one more time. That was great. <laughs> Ashley, I have to ask, what is your favorite dish at Applebee's? My favorite dish at Applebee's <laughs> has got to be the potato skin appetizers. Sure, Incredible. sure, sure. Okay, main dish, though. Oh, main dish? Yeah. Don't dodge the question. I, I think I've only ever eaten appetizers at Applebee's. That's all they serve there, right? Uh, I think it's just small plates of lard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's fair. So when did you start doing stand-up comedy? I did start doing stand-up two years ago, mm -hmm. right here in Beantown at Emerson College. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And what have been your favorite places to perform comedy in Boston? In Boston? Um, the only places I've done it are here and Emerson College. So Somerville nice. <laughs> Media Center is the best for stand-up. You heard it here, folks. Somerville beats out this, Emerson. Yeah, this is the comedy scene. <laughs> so if you could perform stand-up comedy anywhere in the world or the universe, let's extend it, mm -hmm. anywhere, where would it be? Um, for my loving grandmother 
in Florida. No, that was supposed to be like an odd <laughs> response. No one odd. Uh, thank you. Um, I would say on Mars. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> no reason, just there. Fair. Um, so where can people see some of your comedy uh, online or anywhere else? Um, you can, if you Google my name or plug it into YouTube, Ashley Sangstacken. You can guess how it's spelled. That's part of the, it's like a, a troll riddle. Um, if you can spell my last name, then you can see the stand-up. Um, uh, yeah, just on YouTube. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you, Jordan. And that's not all. We have more comedians. Let's bring up another one right now. Our next comedian, please get up, give it up for Diana Liu. Thanks, guys. Uh, I don't mean to brag, but my English is so good. Like, people tell me that all the time. <clears throat> I'm f from China, but I grew up in the Midwest. People always ask me what that was like. Every day was like being Jewish on Christmas. <laughs> Every day, I ate Chinese food and I sat at home feeling left out. <clears throat> the upside is my mom's like my best friend. Together, we were the laziest turds. She used to let me skip school anytime I wanted, and we'd lie on the couch all day watching TV movies and fart battling. Her favorite uh, <clears throat> actress is Nicole Kidman, but she just calls her Nicole like they're on a first name basis. Like she'll point to a magazine and go, Nicole just bought a new dress. She looks so good in red. <clears throat> yeah, it's like a thing they have. Like my mom follows Nicole's career, her relationships, her style evolution. And uh, Nicole doesn't know she exists. Um, but I get it. I'm like, mom, you know, I know where you're coming from. This is also how you relate to all my peers. Um, yeah, so my childhood dream was to live in a blue state. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> um, so I worked very hard. I watched all the PBS. Um, and I went to college in California, where 40% of the student population was Asian. It was like reaching the promised land. Finally. A place where I only had to deal with sexism. Um, <clears throat> I came to Boston for grad school. I went to MIT. Turns out not as fun as I expected. None of my janitors were Matt Damon. <laughs> yeah. Looking back, I think the hardest times in my life were immigrating as a child and going through a PhD program. The first was definitely harder, though, because I had to do it without alcohol. <clears throat> My research team had a rule where if any experiment at all worked, we'd have a beer. And if it didn't, we'd have whiskey. <laughs> like one kid just had a handle of wild turkey on their desk always and a sleeping bag underneath. It was me. That's when I started therapy. It didn't pan out, though. Like, my counselor at school randomly interrupted me one day and goes, you know, I bet, like, a tenth of the Chinese students here are spies. <laughs> Why would you bring up the fact that some kids my age have two high-stress jobs and no suicidal ideations? You sound like my dad. <clears throat> That's when I started comedy. At first it was just um, an outlet as I was finishing my dissertation. But after a while I realized, you know, this is something I can keep doing after I graduate to stay depressed. <laughs> no, I love Boston though. I've lived here for 11 years. It's the longest I've lived anywhere. And I think it's the most beautiful place on earth. Like the other day I was walking along the Charles and the sun caught the water and it shimmered in a thousand points of light. It made me feel poetic. Sex! 
under a bridge. Ever have sex under a bridge? I'm not a troll. That's a haiku I just wrote <laughs> called Bridge Troll. Uh, my parents are still in the Midwest. Now my mom is complaining that her uh, Trump supporter boss keeps telling her her name isn't um, American enough. And I was like, well, mom, what does he think is the most American name? And he's like, I don't know, John Hancock. And I was like, okay, well, here's the thing. Your name means most precious treasure. John Hancock means toilet fist penis. <clears throat> I told you I was good at English. Thank you, I'm Diana Liu. Thank you, that was great. So, Thanks. Yeah. Um, as someone who also grew up in the Midwest, I have to ask you, is there anything you miss about it at all? Um, we had, ch where I grew up, we had chili with uh, cinnamon runs. Okay, yes. That was delicious, yeah. and yeah. nobody does that here, and I think that should be a thing. <laughs> I agree. It's ridiculous. Start doing it, everyone. <laughs> um, so who are some of your comedic influences? Um, I really liked Monty Python. Mm -hmm. I grew up watching, um, uh, what's it called? The Flying Circus. Yeah. yeah, that was on TV a lot. Also, Jim Carrey, like Dumb and Dumber was my favorite movie. Yeah. One time I <laughs> watched it continuously and then I was like, no, I should stop watching it. And then I was like, okay, I'll watch it completely in rewind. <laughs> and then I watch it again. <laughs> Incredible. So how long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Since January. Oh, amazing. That's so great. So <laughs> where can people see you do stand-up or any other comedy that you have out there? Oh, um, I do stand-up at Maggie's Lounge in Quincy and IB in Central Square and like other venues. Um, I write sketch for the Boston Sketch com Company and we have a show at the Rockwell in September. Um, I'm also doing improv with uh, Bodega this group around Boston and I think we have uh, like a special show also in September for the city of Boston. Um, I don't know the venue right now though, but I'm Google us. Awesome. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> look those up. September yeah. is the month. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you for having thank me. You. Let's bring up another comedian right now. Please put your hands together for Sterling Smith. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> I am not like most of the comics you'll see ever. I'm um, in the con in the stand-up comedy world. I'm sort of like a um, triple threat or a triple minority. I'm what the experts call an HBW. That's a happy black woman. <laughs> Here's how I do it. Every day, I do 30 minutes of yoga. Then I have a huge fruit smoothie. And then a little tab of Adderall. <laughs> Repeat for lunch. And then a sensible dinner. If I'm feeling a little shaky or I had a really rough day right before I go to bed, I'll do a little shot, a little bong hit, and a little more Ambien. <laughs> Works great. I've been a guinea pig of my own laboratory. Laboratory. <laughs> I've been experimenting on myself for, oh, I don't know, 20 something years. And I do believe that if you guys want to eventually identify as an HBW, you can. You can, honest, because in Massachusetts, anything is possible. <laughs> hey, if a 16-year-old girl can ask, transgender girl can ask, just make a request. I don't know if you saw the Globe last week about this young lady who said she wanted to have a third gender denomination or whatever you call it on the, on the license, and she said, no, I just asked. I do believe that if she can ask for something that complicated, 
she should also try and get the DMV to move people in and out much easier than, oh, I don't know, how long does it take now? Six hours to get your license registration and what? I can't handle that. I cannot handle it. Ladies and gentlemen, the year I was born, my parents were into two things. Traveling and the Back to Africa movement. Everybody knows what the first one is. I'd say maybe one other of you knows what that is. And that's basically just because it says Back to Africa movement. Okay, you can Google it later if you want. Um, and as a young couple, they had a lot of kids, so they really couldn't go anywhere. And back, um, these days it's called a staycation. Back then, it was called tripping. It was the sm smart. What's that word? Um, smart, economical, and safe way for a young African American couple to survive a Saturday night in the suburbs. <laughs> um, I am so old that on my birth certificate, one, there isn't a space for ethnicity, but what, what they did was they printed C O L O R E D. If you're a millennial, you're probably Googling that right now. What the hell is she saying? Um, when I saw it on my, gift, on my <laughs> gift certificate, when I saw it on my birth certificate, I tried to rub it off. The color, the color still stays. I don't know what, I, just, I can't figure it out. Um, I and my husband celebrated a banner anniversary. We celebrated our 30th anniversary. You don't need to clap. But I just realized that my, I've been with my husband the same age as an average millennial. And I think, I, I think my husband and I are similar to millennials in some cases, but we're very different in some ways. One, first of all, we talk more than text, <laughs> even when we want to break up. Um, and I really think that, I don't, I'm not really sure why we're still together, but I do believe we might be, uh, we're definitely too lazy to get a divorce. <laughs> We're definitely too cheap, but I think one of us is suffering from a severe case of Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> um, when we met, I was a competitive bodybuilder. I was 170 pounds, 70 pounds jacked. Look at me. Um, and he was a 130 pound drug mule. So for the romantics out there, opposites do attract. <laughs> And when we finally made it official, I um, suggested to him that if he doesn't maintain his physical fitness, I would stop having sex with him. It's been about six inches. <laughs> My name is Sterling. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you, Sterling. You're welcome. Thanks. Um, so I have I love to these ask things. you. Yeah, they're All good. Right, I'm going to sit because it looks so big. Good. <laughs> Um, so what inspires your comedy? Uh, life. Yeah, that's, that's fair. That's, <laughs> I guess that would have to be true. It is. Life is, <laughs> life is pretty damn funny, let me tell it you. It is, I agree. So where are your favorite places to perform stand-up around the Anywhere city? that there's a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at Laugh Boston. I love Laugh Boston stage. Um, I'm at Improv Boston all the time. Oh, Maggie's, I've been to Maggie's, I've been everywhere. Great. I'm a stage slut. <laughs> In the most tasteful <laughs> manner possible. So do you have any, who are your biggest uh, influences? Who's inspired your comedy the most? I wanted to be the black Ellen DeGeneres. Because <laughs> she never talks about sex. That's, that's true. I love her. Yeah. So combine her with Wanda Sykes and you've got me. Awesome. And sort of, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> 20 years from now. <laughs> and you mentioned a few of them, but where can people watch your comedy, either in person or online? Come to my house anytime you want. I live in awesome. Arlington. <laughs> and I also have a website, sterlingstandsup.com. That's with two eyes. Two eyes. <laughs> sterlingstandsup.com. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now let's bring up another comedian, Pamela Ross, everyone. God, thank you so much. Um, I've been in Boston for, gosh, almost five years now. I love it. I'm not from here. I'm not a native. You might be able to tell from my accent. I have a distinctive um, Connecticut accent. 
or no matter what I say, it sounds condescending. <laughs> Can you hear it? <laughs> it's palpable. Um, but I love the Boston accent because it has a magical property where it makes ridiculous people sound like they have a point. So a minimum of once a week, I'll find myself at a bus stop like, oh my gosh, this homeless guy is right. <laughs> These pigeons are racist. <laughs> I didn't know I was in the presence of a street prophet, sir. Thank you for enlightening me. Um, my least favorite ex is going to get married this month. Ugh. Congratulations, Susan and Brennan. Woo! <laughs> I wasn't invited, but I will be there. Yeah. If my presence wasn't necessary, they would have password protected the wedding website, uh, which I found several typos on, by the way. I'm just excited to come there and like see the look on his face as he realizes I'm holding a knife. I just... <sighs> a day for memories. I can't wait. I am a single lady. Any single ladies representing? Okay, a few, and they're scared to admit it in this in this space, and I honestly get it, because it easily seems like it converts into a kill room. I do understand. I'm a single lady, and no one told me, it is hard going from being with someone in a serious way to just like diving back into the dating pool, you know? No one told me that the approximate composition of a dating pool was that of a best Western hot tub. Like it's gross, filled with strangers. HPV strains floating around, multiple, <laughs> multiple, but you know, I'm a strong swimmer, so I can adapt, <laughs> slutty, and I know the strokes, this guy gets it, uh, so it's easy, like, you just hook up with gross people and justify it after the fact, right, it has its own logic, it's like, yeah, I know lapping up this dirty dating pool water is going to give me diarrhea, but... What is diarrhea if not a free cleanse? <laughs> Just saying, work smarter, not harder, ladies. Uh, it's fun offending older women with my jokes. I, I like seeing the generational divide um, and embarrassing my four mothers. I don't, yeah, my, uh, my most recent boyfriend, he was a virgin. I met him when he was a virgin at the age of 23, which is true. Um, he was Christian, but... I fixed it. <sighs> it was easy. <laughs> he is a white guy. Um, he was also raised evangelical. You might remember 81% of white evangelicals voted for Trump. And I started sleeping with him right after the election. So in addition to having sex, I got to pretend like I was doing important liberal activism. <laughs> you know? I got to walk around like, uh, how are you resisting? <laughs> Me, I'm doing nothing. I'm just, um, I just, I siphoned a man's faith in God out of his body, okay? <laughs> For the good of our country, so get on my level, and I guess the kegels are working. I um, hope everyone on TV learns about my vaginal strength. It's important to me, it's important. Uh, what else can I tell you about that doesn't have slurs in it? I... <laughs> This is, you know, it's important. I am, uh, I am a bisexual woman. Wow, brave. <laughs> Please stop. No more, no more awards. I'm running out of shelf space. It's very tiring. I, uh, people are like, Pamela, I don't get it. How can you be like overprivileged and overeducated and white and queer at the same time? I'll explain. I saw a marginalized identity and I was like, uh, but how do I make that about me? <laughs> uh, you change your Tinder settings. It's one step. It is one step. It's pretty simple. I, um, I love women's magazines because they're aggressively stupid and unintentionally hilarious to me. Like, I love, the sex advice is so sexist and condescending towards men. It's never like, treat your male partner like he's a three-dimensional human. So he's like, uh, he's a man, trick him. <laughs> what are you, dumb? 
trick him with your butthole. Jesus. She liked it. Tech people loved it. <laughs> I also like those quizzes that are like, what's your body type? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> I've never walked past a reflective surface. Uh, I now have to take a quiz in a print publication like an adult. <laughs> It's like, I know what my body type is. It's pear-shaped, or as I prefer to call it, Renaissance nude. <laughs> Some of us have seen a painting, just like any painting. I like that, because it expedites the sexting process. If someone's like, I want to see what you look like, I can be like, cool, Google birth of Venus. <laughs> I look like that lady on the half shell, but more tired, yes. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jordan. Yeah. So I, I want to know, what's your writing process like? Do you write generally on stage, or is it pretty planned out? How do you approach that? I do tr I do write a lot on stage, mm -hmm. which is why I have to get up at open mics and record everything. But I do write down at least a bullet point of what I want to talk about. Right. So what are your favorite mics to to either go and work stuff out or maybe mm -hmm. go to with your with your more uh, ready material? Sure. Well, I really love, I was just there last night, um, Thunder Bar at yeah. Wonder Bar in Alston, yeah. which is, uh, some of us have been to. It's really great. I mean, it's a mic that's as good or better than any showcase in the city. Mm -hmm. Owen Linders is an amazing host, so I found that to be a really good resource for me. Great. And how long have you been doing stand-up? Four years, and it was this last May was my anniversary. Awesome. So, yeah, it was Great. fun. Yeah. It was good. Incredible. So, where can people see you do shows around sure. the Sure. Well, I have to plug my weekly, um, and I am moving to New York soon, but I'm going to be there for a few more weeks. The Mendoza Line, every Saturday at 9 at the Dugout Cafe, which kind of looks like a dive from the outside, but come in. It's actually really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Let's bring up another comedian. It is time for you all to listen to comedy from Jamal Russell. I like how he just pointed right at me. Like I'm, he assumed I'm Jamal. <laughs> I don't even know this guy. Jamal Russell. I gotta be the black guy in the front. Who else is? But thank you, thank you. <laughs> I drove all the way up here from uh, Johnston, which is um. It's different in Johnston, because I'm the only black guy in Johnston, <laughs> Rhode Island. And another black guy moved in. Instead of me being proud, like, yeah, I got someone to talk to. I got jealous. Because <laughs> those are my white people. <laughs> like, I terrorize all of them. You see the locked doors? All them car locked doors? Those are mine. That's what I did. <laughs> all right? Neighborhood Wash, they did that because of me. I'm the terror around here. All right? Mr. Pearl, clutch your purse, because I did it, not you. You can get to stepping. <laughs> Oh man, oh, what's going on? Um, it's beard season. Every man got a beard. He has a beard. It's a glow up. Everybody got a beard. I don't have a beard. I realized something. I don't. I don't have a beard voice. This is this is not a voice of a man who should have a beard. <laughs> like if I came up here with a beard, I want to mess all you guys' heads up. I'm telling you, <laughs> right now. She want to drop her camera and clipboard. She like what the what? I'm telling you. His voice is barely even a man. I don't know. <laughs> it's my mom's fault, though. I went to my mom in, in middle school. I said, Mom, everybody's picking on me. They said I sound like a girl. She's like, you don't sound like a girl, baby. You have a voice of an angel. <laughs> okay? Think of it. All instruments come untuned. That's your instrument. You just need to practice. I was nine. I'm 23 now. I did a lot of practicing, and this is still what's coming out. This is, thank you, Mom. If, my mom's not going to see this, but thank you, Mom. I'm going to look in the camera. Thank you. Okay? I'm still single, so it's your fault. Oh, man. Uh, speaking of uh, dating, I'm single. I look like this. This is what I dress like people on a daily basis. All right? That means white women don't like me. They want the full black experience. <laughs> this is not it. I have I have a nine to five. I have a nine to five. That means I can only be black on the weekends, you know? <laughs> I had one white girlfriend. Two years ago, I had one white girlfriend. She broke up with me. Don't be sad. It was my fault. I did it. Okay, I wasn't cautious enough. 
She woke up one morning and caught me watching Friends. <laughs> I tried to hide it on Netflix, but I couldn't. It was in my queue already. Okay? Ross and Rachel gets me every time. Every time. Those dang rascals. <laughs> yes! I got someone behind the glass that likes my jokes. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I don't know you guys, but I'm going to tell you one of my biggest fears. I'm scared of every white man named Bubba. <laughs> That's right. Every white man num named Bubba scares me. I, I went to class for that, though. Oh, you go to all black? You didn't go to all black school. <laughs> I don't know why I'm pointing at you, so you didn't go to all black school. <laughs> you go to all black school, you take classes now. You take bubble one-on-one. <laughs> Bubbleology, you know? Bubble 102, the study of bubble. All bubbles, man. You know why I'm scared of bubbles? They country strong. They're not regular strong, they country strong. That means they can lift two refrigerators with one hand and pull a Mack truck with the other hand. <laughs> All Bubba's has murdered somebody via strangulation. That's, that's Bubba's for you, man. All right, before I leave you guys, like I said, I grew up, you can tell by my accent, I grew up down south, Maryland-ish area, which is down south-ish, to a mom who was black and mean, like all black mamas are, mean. I'm pretty sure if Sterling had a kid, she'll, she'll be mean. She's not going to be happy no more. <laughs> all the bagly mean. She, <laughs> And my mom loves to threaten me all the time. She loves to threaten me. I feel like one of my biggest threats she gave me, she said, I'm going to stick this shoe so, so far up your tail, you'll be tasting leather for a month. <laughs> but then I realized why my brother was ahead of me all this time. Every time, my brother was ahead of me because she threatened him, and she actually did it. She told my brother she's going to smack him so hard, he's going gonna to end up in next week. <laughs> now I'm a loser. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was so great. So, because you brought it up, I have to ask you, of all the friends, and let's include Gunther, <laughs> who's your second favorite? Uh, second favorite? Joey. Joey. He was hilarious. <laughs> Stupid, but hilarious. He is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now, who gets the grand title of favorite? Ross. All right. <laughs> he actually got Jennifer Aniston, so <laughs> he is a plus in my book. And he dated the only black girl who showed up on the show. So if he can get one black girl, Ross is the man. <laughs> so how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, September will make a year. Awesome. So not that long. Yeah. You know? And uh, where are your favorite places to, to do stand-up? Either open mics or other shows around the city? Um... I've been to Midway Cafe. I've been to Thunder Bar. One girl said Thunder Bar. Um, anywhere I see on that Facebook page, right. I just pop up, go up, you know. Anywhere where it's, ironically, anywhere where I can get another black person in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> There's always just two, me and one more, so. I always got to point that person out. She's Sterling. She's in the dark. See, she's not coming to the light, but it's okay. I'm a bad. She's one, one over there. Over there. And, uh, and where can people see your comedy, either online or in person? Uh, YouTube as Jamal the Comedian, Instagram as Jamal the Comedian, and Facebook as you know it, Jamal the Comedian. Great. Well, look that up. Thank you so much. Thank you, bro. We have one more comedian for you today. Please put your hands together for Reese Cotton, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. That's right, you heard right. My last name is Cotton. <laughs> being black with the last name Cotton is like being an Irish boy with the name Sean Patrick Whiskey, okay? <laughs> okay. In other words, I'll never need Ancestry.com. Um, <laughs> Pretty sure my ancestors came here on a ship and it wasn't a cruise. Do you get my drift? Would you actually believe that uh, someone has actually called me the the cotton picking comedian? I know. Oh my God! It just she only got away with it because she's black and she's my grandma. Those are the only those are the only two reasons. 
No, my girl, my girl was pretty cool. She got me a, a, a dog recently. Any uh, dog owners in the building? Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. In good company. You know, I have a dog, uh, a mixed breed, um, part a-hole, part douchebag, uh, <laughs> puppy pit, you know. Um, he's actually a rescue. He almost died once when he knocked over my beer. <laughs> But uh, I'm serious. My dog has problems, though, to keep it to keep it 100. You know, I threw a stick for him to go fetch, and he brought me back a Weight Watchers magazine. And, <laughs> and that is disrespectful. That is, and, and you have to fix that disrespect. Uh, you can hire an animal trainer, or you can do what I did, which is starve him for a day, like a month. But the point is, <laughs> the point is, the next time we play fetch, my dog brought me back a bag of weed. <laughs> yes. Yes, I have, I have no idea where he got it from because I keep my weed in my Bible. Uh, <laughs> it makes for an effective bookmark, plus I know it's safe with the Lord. <laughs> I know some probably think I'm going to hell for that, but if so, I'll be going high. That's all, That's all I'm saying. Actually, I've been clean and sober for the uh, for the last three months. So, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. I've been broke and unable to afford drugs <laughs> or alcohol for the last three months. You know, it's uh it's been a real crisis. Some call it sobriety. I call it a crisis. Tomato, tomato. Uh, you understand? Um, actually, you know, my dog has a lot of issues. He needs therapy. You know, ever since he found out I'm not his real mother. Um, he's been taking that kind of hard. And uh, I met his mom. And uh, I think we can all agree. She's the real B word. <laughs> like the genuine one. <laughs> no, <laughs> But it's, a, it's actually really difficult to, uh, to get apartment housing um, in the Boston area if you own a pit bull. Uh, because of breed restrictions. So after I got rejected from numerous landlords and, and real estate agencies, I finally just looked down at my dog, Max, and I said, dude, how does it feel to be black? We um, <laughs> we can't get an apartment anywhere. They didn't even pretend to check my credit. This is, <laughs> you know, this is BS, you know? But, uh, but it's all good, though, because now I'm living in my grandmother's basement rent-free. Yeah, it's, it's a sweet deal. It's uh, rent free because she doesn't know I'm down there. That's um, I should probably disclose that. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually your favorite grandchild because she thinks I visit her three times a day. Um, I'm just coming upstairs from the basement, you know, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, <laughs> no, but but seriously, I I I love my grandma. I love to impress her. And, um, you know, recently I took her to a, a Chinese restaurant uh, because I speak Chinese. Um, spent a, spent a, a semester abroad over in uh, Xi'an, China. And uh, I wanted to impress her. So I, we got our seats and I, I motioned for the waiter to come over, right? I said, wait, 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 wait. And translation is, hey, mister, excuse me, was this your best dish here? And the Chinese waiter just proceeded to ignore me. And I couldn't have that, not in front of my grandmother, so I let him know, hey, what's your hearing? Then she's in Zai, Zha Zhang, what's your Byron? So he gon' quiet, gon' quiet. Jackie Chan. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that, that rough translation is I'm black, but right now we're gonna pretend I'm white and chop chop with my order, Jackie Chan. And um, <laughs> that definitely got his attention, you know, it's just that. The Chinese waiter looked at me and said, I only speak English, douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> My name is G. Scott. You guys have been wonderful. Thank you. Reese, thank you so much. Sure. So who, um, who are some of your favorite all-time comedians? Who's influenced you the most? Ooh, oh, okay. Uh, I'd have to say uh, Louis Black, Kevin Hart. Awesome. Yeah. And how long have you been doing comedy? I've been doing comedy for three and a half years. That's so great. So what are some of your favorite spots to do comedy at around Boston? Some of my favorite spots are uh, Improv Boston, um, uh, Slade's 
in in Roxbury. They have comedy nights there on Wednesday night called the Black Comedy Explosion. There's like a, just too many to name. Awesome. You know? That's so great to hear. And where can people see your comedy either, you know, in person at one of the mics you mentioned or any other shows or anywhere online? Yeah, so um you can you can see some of my comedy at uh, on my website, uh reesecotton uh, dot com. R E E C E C O T T O N dot com and everything you need to know about me literally is on my website. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Well look that up. Thank you so much. You're welcome, thank you. Thanks. So that's that's everyone. Those were all our comedians. Please give another hand for every single one of the comedians we've had. Uh, and also to the amazing production crew keeping this all going. And let's clap for them as well. <laughs> and for all of you for being here. Thank you so much. I think we're going to we're going to head out now. All right. Thank you guys. Uh,